Kia ora whanau. how's it going? Great to be back with you today on uh, Word for Monday, or Word on Monday. Uh, we're carrying on with our um, series on the woman at the well, um, Springs of Water uh, theme. Um, yesterday we went into our second message around that, and today I just want to present to us some thoughts to think about for, for this week and pray over. I just want to remind us about the four areas um, that, uh, um, or five areas that I've, I've given in relationship to how to um, be an effective witness um, to those who are seeking the Lord, um, to those who Jesus sees as friends. Um, the difficulty we, we have about that type of understanding is we don't know who are seeking. We don't know who are friends of Jesus are in that journey. Um, so we approach those out in our community as if everyone is a friend of Jesus and everyone is seeking. Um, but there is a posture that we need to hold and it's those five, five points that uh, I mentioned. Um, remembering that last week we talked about um, points one and two uh, are this 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 posture that we have uh, with Jesus and self ourselves is that firstly we need to know him and therefore love him that's Jesus we need to follow him we need to eagerly seek after and pursue him why do we need to do that uh, in part it's about um, learning and discerning the the voice of God speaking us through the, through the Holy Spirit understanding that voice, understanding how the Spirit speaks to us. Psalm 29, 29 talks about the voice of the Lord speaks on many waters. The voice of the Lord thunders on many seas. Now, you and I are that water, um, but yet God speaks. And so you and I hear God differently, um, and it's uh, together that we, we grow in our faith and our understanding of who Jesus is, and therefore what he wants to do in our lives. So firstly, as I remembered, point one, love him. Point two, um, allow that love to overflow within us. You know, overflow with that love. Let it pour out like the woman at the well. As she drank from the water, she realized that Jesus was the, was the Messiah. And so um, out of that outflowing, she went out and told um, the village, come and meet the Messiah. He revealed everything about me. He told, he, he, he disclosed everything about me. He's the Messiah. So there's this outflowing, this, this source of, of inspiration, the source of nuances, the source of the fruits of the Spirit, the source of uh, prophetic understanding, the source of love, the source, it, it needs to overflow out of us um, so that when we are meeting with other people, it's out of that overflow that we're able to discern uh, the whispers that God might be doing with other people. Um, thirdly, and we're going to get uh, into those um, in more detail, um, notice where people are. What's the field that they're in? What's the situation that they're in? Um, what's the context they're in? It's in that, and it's, and it's often in that environment that God will, will, will be whispering. Uh, like when uh, King David was in the fields looking after the sheep. Uh, God used those images and metaphors around uh, as metaphors around him to start speaking to him. Uh, and he learnt the voice of the Lord in the context of his spaces. So uh, notice where people are at and where they are uh, and the fields they're in. Uh, this could be your farming community, could be the businesses in town, could be on our marae, it could be um, in our whare wānanga, in our universities and education systems. Um, it could be a stay-at-home mum or a stay-at-home dad. Um, learn the environment, learn the place that you're in, and, and understand it. You know, um, try to try to figure out ways of how how does the voice of the Lord speak? What are the questions that Jesus is doing? And like yesterday, we also have to think about: Are there biases? Are there things in our lives that we have been entrapped by that's actually limiting us from hearing Him? Uh, that's holding us back from seeing and, and seeing that God is speaking. Are we so preoccupied with our own agenda, our own thought patterns, our own solutions that we're actually missing God speaking to his friends, that Jesus is he's touching the seeker 
that's right in front of us. Um, so once you've noticed them, then observe, observe a need. Like Jesus did at the, water, the, the woman at the well, um, he, he knew uh, by his open-ended questions that there was a need in her that was a lot deeper than just the physical presence of a possible solution. Um, he, by his open-ended questions, keep on going deeper. And it's in those questions that Jesus posed that revealed her heart and whether she was open. And so you see this, this breaking down of her thought patterns and her support structures to where she goes, actually, he's the one that I really need, the one that I can drink and I have eternal, this eternal well of water springing up in, inside. And then 50, lastly, know the source that can meet every need. So the five points, love him, seek after Jesus, overflow with that love, notice where people are, in other, in other words, the fields that they come from, observe a need, um, what is the well in their lives? And um, uh, fifthly, know the source that can meet that need. You know, we, we, can, we can meet um, physical needs, uh, but it's only Jesus that can meet the deeper needs. And so we need to unpack that and um, uh, work out what that, what that real need is. Um, yesterday we talked about um, uh, the woman's response and her questions. Uh, the week before, uh, we looked at Jesus and how, he, how his posture was for the woman and how he broke down the cultural practices, broke down the social structures, broke down the, the possibilities of uh, an offence um, that he would, would have represented it or that she was familiar with. And so he cuts across those cultural nuances um, that was evident in the day and does the same for us today. And, and then yesterday we, we, we focused more on, on the woman and her response, um, noting that it didn't really matter how she responded, Jesus wasn't going to get into an argument with her in order that he would win. His purpose was to win her heart, not win the argument. And I know even when preparing um, this, this, this corridor, that's been a challenge to me. Um, is quite often I'm more concerned about winning the argument than winning the person. And so even, even for me that's a, it's been a challenge and um, something that I need to think on and, and approach when how do, I, how do I work with people, how do I develop people, how do I engage with my wife, how do I engage with my sons, how do I engage with people out in the community um, and what does that mean for me in relationship to both the questions and the responses how do I formulate my responses what what do I say and do in relationship to when I'm hearing you know am I am I hearing with my mouth and listening with my ears you know what I mean um, I do, I'm formulating a response before and I haven't really heard the, the question or the response by the other person so those are all the little challenges that this particular part of the, um, the story uh, unfolds um, you know, the, the woman is really a representative of all of us. But it's, it's a beautiful passage because she is the first evangelist. It's not the disciples. Um, she's the one that actually goes out after meeting her Messiah and then draws in other people and saying, come and meet the Messiah who's revealed everything about me. Um, she has just, be, just become a funnel to draw people towards Jesus. Um, what a great example. Uh, and this will be unfolded uh, in, this, in the weeks to come. But what a, what a great example of how God brings transformation to someone where they may have started off in a wrong place or in a hard place or un under real challenging situations. But through the encounter with Jesus, she moves forward into a place of redemption, a place of declaration, a place of praise, a place of joy. And that's the thing that Jesus does. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden and burdened, for my yoke is light. You know, he said, I come not to condemn the world, 
not to condemn us, but to bring life and life in its fullness. So, uh, yeah, um, let's think about these, ponder these, these thoughts and these questions that I've raised today uh, as we go into this week. Um, I know that even in preparing the, th the messages on, around this and uh, my thoughts around this particular passage, it's challenged me as well. Um, and it's, it's requiring me to think about how I grow and develop. And may it do the same, the same for all of us. Um, you know, Jesus, in closing, wanted to lift her level of thinking up from a material need to a spiritual need. She heard the words, but she didn't know the meaning of living water. And I pray that as the Holy Spirit falls upon us this week, as the Holy Spirit joins in with us this uh, um, this time of year and spring when new things are coming through. May we not just see the physical words and what they represent physically, but may we see the underlining current. May we see the underlining theme, the spiritual need, and in this case, living water. Well, whānau, uh, I pray that uh, this has been helpful. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Uh, be encouraged if you've liked this subscribe um, if there's some other videos here you might think uh, yeah, I might, might, might start watching these uh, please give us a thumbs up um, if you've liked it and um, really this channel is a really about trying to make faith um, simple trying to find ways of building our faith um, throughout the week where we're hearing God and seeing God and speaking to him and he's speaking to us every day of the week uh, not just doing stuff on, a, on when we get together in church bases, but that we take them out into the world and make disciples of all peoples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So, Father, be blessed. Um, and as I said, if you like it, be it. If you want to watch some more videos, come over here. Um, have a great week, and we'll see you later on. Matua.